Okay, in the deep future, your lifespan will be exponentially longer than it is now. But what does that really mean in your day-to-day -day existence? Let's take the best case scenario. Everything you've always wanted to do. Learn a new language, play the piano, learn to paint. In the future, you'll have all the time in the world to do those things and more. That will change everything about how we approach our lives. It's unconscious, but you think about the day you're gonna die. When you do anything, going to college, getting a job, retirement, all these things are predicated on one fact, the day you die. We could have a really long lifespan. A thousand years, a hundred thousand years. One hundred thousand years, that's hard to even imagine. Once we achieve this radical life extension, what some futurists refer to as a negligible senescence, where we've ceased to age, society as we know it will change quite dramatically. We will continue to evolve as individuals, you know, find new ways of interacting with the world, develop new skills, new relationships. Currently, our relationships are based on the idea that we are supposed to stay together till death do us part. But if that is indefinitely, they might not last that long. I mean, I'd like to think that, that there are marriages that could last five centuries and, and everyone would be happy. But, you know, a marriage that lasts five decades seems to strain the emotional resources of most people these days. People will have a much more do-it-yourself approach to relationships, so kind of building the kinds of relationships they want to have, building families that they want to have. Unlimited relationships of every kind. Yes, I bet a lot of you can get on board with that. But now, let's look at the not awesome possibility of radical life extension. The danger facing a society that lives forever is stagnation. Without death, we may just stop wanting or needing to do, well, anything. I feel like the idea that you could die, you know, gives you some kind of urgency about what you do with your life. Like, are you gonna achieve your goals? Are you gonna finally take that trip to Barbados? On the other hand, many futurists disregard the idea that death is what gets us out of bed in the morning. There's this common argument against radical life extension that I hear constantly, and that is, oh, why would anyone want to live forever? We'd be so bored. And I'm like, well, are you serious? If anything, we're going to be paralyzed by choice. Like, what are we going to do with ourselves, given that we have all these ways of, you know, engaging in the world and, and playing and, and relating to each other? Whether we learn to kite surf and play the guitar or lay in bed all day, there are some practical consequences to our radically longer lives. Without death, the world could face a whole new array of population control issues. That's where longevity gets really sticky, because if we're not going to overrun the planet with a bunch of 100-year-old people, we really have to rethink how we manage populations on the planet. If we've suddenly got six billion people that aren't going anywhere, why do we need to have more children? Can this planet support increasing numbers of people as more and more babies are born? What does it do to us if we are nothing but adults? We don't have kids around. I think that's harmful. Yes, there are many challenges that will arise as a result of radical life extension, such as the overpopulation problem. But I suspect that in the future, we will increasingly come to possess tools that will allow us to fix those problems. But some of those year million solutions could be as frightening as the original problem of death once was. In 500 years, you could imagine a culture where we have a regulatory agency that's in charge of who gets to have a kid because we got to keep the population low enough to allow people to live for a really long time. I don't like the sound of that, but that might not even be the half of it. It could get worse. 